Honorable Dean, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Your Excellency, uh, Dr. Huyu, Presidential Advisor. Mr. Donfried, we were a bit waiting for you, but somewhat the better. He is the Executive Director of our of this Institute of uh, Cultural Diplomacy, our host, uh, Cher Professor Dalsas de Lorraine, Liebe Gäste aus Österreich und Deutschland, ladies and gentlemen. We have also the Rector, His Magnificency, of the University of Babes Boy of Cluj from Transylvania in Romania. We are the fortunate beneficiaries of the advantages of border crossings in Europe, which is threatened by new confines. An encouraging sign for historical progress lies in the fact that professors and researchers from Romania, even from Israel, from Austria, from France, from Germany, from other countries, represented here, by the way, by the students, but now, I will be stressing the role of my former colleagues because University of Cluj, the University of Cluj, Babes Boya, is also my alma mater. So I'm noticing with uh, uh, gratitude and satisfaction that they are developing in uh, Cluj a transnational and even a transdisciplinary academic project of excellence in the very heart uh, of the University of Upper Dacia. I respectfully and wholeheartedly salute our remaining guests, wishing them much success on this journey of revival and consolidation of the European spirit. Um, beyond inner and outer fences, in the name of common, free, and informed reflection on our community of destiny. It has found, this conference has found one of its mandatory centers in Berlin. It gives me great pleasure to observe that today in Berlin, our friends from Elsass are standing beside our friends from Transylvania. It's an ironic and somehow auto-ironic contextualization. Actually, this conference, this Forum has two poles, two border guards. The eastern one, it's in this occurrence, Transylvania. The western, Alsace. Intermarium, Europe's eastern defense border between the Baltic and Black Seas. In the romantic realpolitik of Marshal Pilsudski, revised by Robert D. Kaplan. meets today Lotharingia in the capital of the Reich to, to discuss nation, community, and borders 100 years after the Battle of Verdun. What a delightful and heroic commemorative enterprise. As you all know, Transylvania is part of the pivot of ancient Europe's heartland in the vision of the founder of geopolitics, the Briton Halford Mackinder, around 19. For our friends from the University of Strasbourg, the Lotharingian border is the keystone in the history of European conflict and reconciliation between France and Germany. This border, the so-called Lotharingian border, was also the core of a Carolingian definition about Europe, one that is probably, unfortunately, dying right now, wiped out before our eyes. In spite of these ill bodings, tamed and partially reactivated over and over again, as a modest practitioner, perhaps even improver of the art of the possible, which is also the diplomacy, not only generally politics, I wish you all in Romanian, French, German, Italian, which means under the circumstances using the globish, 
the lingua franca, which is English, a peaceful and redeeming academic stay. I am delighted to be present in such a stimulating setting for intellectual, cultural, and diplomatic discussion at the Institute of Cultural Democracy here in the uh, capital of United Germany. The expertise and charm of our hosts are the most alluring prerequisites for the participants in this meeting and their subjects for discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my long-term practices during public discourse, being a former, hopefully I will be staying like this, journalist, illustrated rather by measured liberties, will not succeed in making me less disciplined in my new capacity as ambassador. In this case of diplomatic status, it seems that um, loaded, loaded silence is better appreciated than rhetorical convolutions. I will be attempting to maintain a reasonable balance. We are living in Europe on a continent which is the matter, where the matter of status quo is abruptly being questioned. Signs of discord and dangerous fluidity can be seen in common institutions, be it Eurogroup, Schengen area, etc. The European countries have begun showing signs of their former selves, precisely those things that they wished to overcome through European integration, egotism, the renationalization of interests, the obsidional complex, which is the siege mentality, the refusal of federal consensuality. Multiple concomitant and overlapping crises are shaking the very foundation of the European construction of its institutional infrastructure. A social and economic crisis which has not yet digested the disparity between rich and poor countries with the same currency and social expectations. Then the continuing economic crisis, which has led to an escalating political crisis. In most of the European countries, starting with those that were the founders of the EU, populist parties and leaders with powerful anti-democratic and anti-European tendencies are playing an active role in the primary or secondary plan. The dynamic of European developments fuels animosity and encourages them to the same degree of populism. To make matters worse, the power to fuel demagogic and aggressive populism has also contaminated America, the place from which we normally we're expecting a beneficial contribution of that inalterable common sense and even savior intervention. We are talking about a combination of material and moral crises, which make the inhabitants of Europe believe once again, after hundreds of years of experiences, to the contrary, that they will be, uh, that they will live better and happier on their own, rather than as part of a collective system. Here the nation again plays the role of double agent, impossible to cover up entirely. Scotland wants to leave Great Britain and Great Britain wants to leave the EU. We have here the gross fact of this reciprocally scandalous situation, a double bind of the forward centrifugal advance even devoid of statistical chances of realization, coming from the first and the most solid political and geopolitical democracy of modern times, from Scottish pro-capitalist and transnational illuminism to Winston Churchill's pan-Europeanism, we have become accustomed to something different from the British. It is not only the British, but also the Hungarians and Poles that are bringing about great surprise for themselves, even before surprising, surprising us, the others. 
the Poland of heroism and honor, Catholic solidarity and liberal rationality develops a case that is not distinct from provincial democrature. Hungary has become retrained in cadastral survey with a powerful new leaning towards geopolitical neoconstructivism. Namely, it is building defense fences that are also walls of separation along the borders with Romania and Serbia. In the meantime, paradoxically, the Hungarian political leaders are talking of the common destiny of the Hungarians in the Carpathian Basin. What I'm asking myself is, do you mean that you want to relaunch a new Hungarian concept from the Carpathian Basin and close neighbors with Putin colot anti-liberalism inside and separation walls between mother Hungary and her historical daughters, Transylvania and Voivodina. You have been noticed that I uh, took on for a while the role of Advocatus Diaboli. Here we have an out of focus photograph of an in adjecto contradiction which the very angry a little bit nervous, but still brilliant, neo-Marxist Slovenian philosopher Slavoj Cizek called a fetishist disavowal, le désaveu fetishiste. In other words, I know it is impossible, but I will make an attempt, hence a dangerous game played by many Europeans and Americans at the expense of the famous catastrophe gravity seriousness dilemma. Many tend to give up gravity, seriousness, bewitched by the admittedly undying charm of the catastrophe. We have a problem in connection with the waves of refugees that are moving towards Europe. Most are Muslim refugees from Syria, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Maghreb, but also apparently soon to be coming in masses from sub-Saharan. Africa. We are now only discussing them in generic terms. These millions of poor, young, resentful Muslims as such possible terrorists who want to come to our countries, especially to this country, which is the most prosperous and generous of the European countries, and who is, which is kind of operative neo-functionalist symbol of the post-illuminist Greco-Roman Judeo-Christian Europe. Intrinsically, without other supplementary analysis, the situation foresees a painful and prolonged process of search and dangers. We are in the midst of a turning point in history and with a retarder and a bullock or phantasmatic pointsman. Accordingly, overlapping and paradoxical crisis. Greece is the country hardest hit by the financial and economic crisis, albeit with its own significant contribution to its unhappiness, and is today almost single-handedly protecting United Europe's borders in the absence of promised yet unmet measures. Turkey. The sick man of Europe, you remember, seen by Europe for the past several hundred years as the country of emblematic expansionist Islam, has turned by insistent and tantalizing invitation from the refused in the EU chamber into Europe's lifeguard in this refugee crisis. France, with its French Revolution values, as the largest anti-liberal and anti-European party. The Germany of literary and even geopolitical romanticism is scolding its Balkan neighbors, Austria and Hungary, because they close their borders with Greece, while it is only in this manner that it can count its refugees and dress its political and societal wounds. A recent Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung editorial is entitled Danke schön Österreich and Viktor Orban is one of the two European heads of state received by the patriarch of German reunification, Helmut Kohl, at, his, um, at this year, 
um, anniversary. The Kantian ideal of European values appears powerless, while realpolitik looks Bismarckian, abusive, but highly efficient. And finally, America withdrawal from the classical Cold War epicenter. Europe and the Middle East, towards the southeastern Asian pivot. Russia, at loggerheads with the Europeans since its occupation of Crimea and its hostilities against Ukraine, have likewise become an undesirable yet useful lifeguard in Syria, which is very strange. Hungary, Macedonia, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, Turkey, and even Austria, joined by Russia and far away by China in the larger ring of the economic globalization plan, are using non-liberal means to rescue the angstful community of the liberal Euro-Atlantic world very discontented with itself. How much longer can such a well-built mechanism, impeccably structured by which has gone into a trust reversal last? Trust reversal. This is the name of an unusual situation in which modern airplane pilots observe during the landing procedures that the turbines, instead of braking, accelerate as during takeoff. This cognitive dissonance in technical aviation terms is fatal, even when the turbines, instead of reviving up during takeoff, put on the brakes. As would seem, it happening is happening at this time on, in our world. But ladies and gentlemen, Europe, with its countries, peoples, languages, dialects, borders, tribes, admittedly, whether open or porous, is the sum of numerous crises, wars, carnages, collapses, accompanied and followed according to the Greek etymology of the word crisis by discernment and from herein out by solutions. Europe's capacity for renewal was catalyzed by wars, slippages, splittings, temporary historical regression. We will succeed in ensuring that such scourges not be part of a mandatory stage. In the course of these two days, I'm certain that you will use this qualified academic platform, um, this generous scene of the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy in Berlin, to discuss many problems that I have merely touched upon and propose solution we all wish for. I enjoy very much having the opportunity to address such a knowledgeable and patient audience. And I am looking forward to receive you all in the Romanian Embassy tomorrow night at a kind of get-together, friendly get-together reception. Thanks a lot. <laughs>